Being a watchmaker must be kind of a difficult job, just as it is. There's so many little parts, there's so many, you know, different little things you gotta do, and I, I, I feel like I would not be able to be a watchmaker. I feel like I'd just be too stupid and too dumb, and I would give up and throw it in the trash can. I'd be like, ah, I hate you, watch. Go tell someone else's time, even though I didn't build you, so you don't really exist. But you know, you get the point. I would not be a good watchmaker. Now, being a blind watchmaker, however, if there is such a thing, So The Blind Watchmaker is written by Richard Dawkins, famous atheist intellectual. Uh, you guys have probably all heard of him, or if you haven't, well, congratulations, you have now heard of Richard Dawkins. And the book basically is Dawkins' defense and explanation for why the theory of evolution founded by Charles Darwin is still the uh, best theory known to mankind with regards to how everything came to be in nature. Um, he argues that, uh, you know, he's one of his big arguments is that there is no need for a watchmaker, as in, like, there is no need for a creator, there's no need for a god. Evolution creates everything. Um, uh, and and the, the, the need for god is very, it, it's, just, it's just not necessary to have a god or a creator guide it. His, his argument in the book is that Evolution and natural selection really is uh, what could be called the blind watchmaker. And I picked up this book years ago because uh, I was real curious, really curious about Richard Dawkins. I've read his book, uh, The God Delusion, and uh, I thought that was a pretty interesting book as well. And I, I just, uh, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to read more from the other side uh, of things because I actually am a pretty religious person. Um, I do believe in a watchmaker, um, although I'm not. You know, Dawkins did a lot to persuade me to think that uh, there is perhaps the watchmaker used evolution. And I don't know, I've kind of come around on the theory of evolution for the most part over the, over the years. I've still got questions about it, as we'll get into. But uh, yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to read The Blind Watchmaker, and so I picked it up in the store and just I kind of sat on it for years. But uh, I'm really glad that I finally got around to reading it. And... Um, yeah, let's get into what I liked and did not like about The Blind Watchmaker. Richard Dawkins is a great writer. Uh, he really is, like, I mean, he's very easy to read, very easy to understand. His prose is kind of magnificent. Uh, explaining very scientific, very complicated things in layman terms is a very difficult thing to do, and Richard Dawkins does it extremely well. Another thing I really like about the book is Dawkins is actually, he's kind of, he's pretty funny. He has some good lines here and there that, uh, you know, definitely spice up the uh, the reading because it is, it is a long book. It is for certain a long book. And that's, we'll get into what, what I think of that in a little bit. Another thing I really liked about the book is Dawkins really, I mean, he really delved in deep on what different people, different parties think about evolution, the different sects of Darwinism. He really delves into the history of everything, the history of the theory, the history of the uh, arrival theories and all this stuff. And I really got a good understanding, I feel like, of the theory of evolution and of uh, its history and of its significance. Now I wish, I so wish, now I, I had all these notes that I was, I was gonna, like, there are different passages I wanted to talk about from the book that I would have here today if I had not lost my original copy of this book. I was on an, I was an extra in a movie, uh, and I brought a backpack, and the book was in the backpack, and I forgot the backpack, went back to the uh, extra location, the, lo the shooting location the next day, and the backpack and the book were gone. And so I don't have any notes for most of the book. I mean, I had two more chapters left to read uh, uh, whenever I finally got my second copy. And so there aren't really any notes for me to talk about, but what I will say is Dawkins, he made a lot of great points, made a lot of uh, really, I mean like, you know, I don't know if you guys have uh, really delved much into the whole evolution, creationism, all this different opposing stuff, but uh, he dispelled a lot of myths about that are said about evolution that, uh, you know, he, he really dispels a whole bunch of the arguments against evolution. He does it very articulately and very smartly. I still have questions because this book is about 30 years old 
And so science has changed. And I know that some of the science in this book has been overturned. Um, and so I want to read a more contemporary book on this subject here soon. He made an extremely good case, I can remember, for uh, why there are specific animals that seemed perfect, seem perfectly evolved for s certain things. He made a great argument there that I found very compelling uh, for the theory of evolution. Some of my favorite chapters, I think, were The or uh, Origins and Miracles and Constructive Evolution, Explosions and Spirals. I mean, he talks a whole lot about uh, arms races and evolution, why, there are, why, why does the leopard get faster and the gazelle get faster, or why do they not? And it's, he, he, he really goes into some stuff. I wish I had my notes, but I don't. I'm sorry, okay? I will say I enjoyed this book more than I enjoyed uh, The God Delusion, which was the other book I read of Dawkins. The God Delusion I felt was pretty dishonest uh, and intentionally uh, uh, mean and uh, disrespectful to religious people. Um, but the blind watchmaker, mostly he just stuck to the science and to the arguments. Um, and yeah, like I said, I think he made a lot of great arguments. Unfortunately, I can't remember all of them because I lost all my notes, but, uh, he made a lot of good ones and he made some that were kind of flimsy. His argument for how the origin of life could have, how something could have come from nothing was ex was as religious as any religious argument you've ever seen. As fairy tale-ish as anything in the Bible or any other religious book. And also he, I don't know, like towards the end of the book, he made an argument about, uh, you know, basically the old idea of like, uh, well, shouldn't, if there was a God who created this infinitely complex universe and everything, shouldn't he be even infinitely more complex than everything here? Isn't there a regression to, uh, you know, even more complexity? And it's basically asking the question of like, if uh, God is, if God created everything, then who created God? And I just, I, I, I cannot believe that Richard Dawkins, I almost feel like he's being dishonest here because I know that he's heard the argument against that from religious people, which is that God isn't of this universe. He's not of the laws of this universe. And this universe, there's a beginning, there's an end. There's all these different things, these laws and these physics and stuff. God, none of this applies to him. He exists outside of this. There is no such thing as time for him. He is all present. He's always been here, always will be here. Now, some other things that I was not a fan of, there is a chapter in this book. I can't remember what, which chapter, but it's towards the beginning where Richard Dawkins literally sets up this long, boring, incredibly boring computer simulated um, experiment of evolution. It is so, it's the only chapter of the book where I skimmed large portions of it. It was so dumb and it like his 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 point was like, oh look here, we, we could we can and with the with a computer we can create uh, something that replicates evolution. Look at this, this is wonderful. See how it doesn't need any guidance or any, you know, you know you know, shifting hand to make all these, you know, these biomorph uh, creatures in my internet landscape. 
and he goes on and on and on. And it's really stupid because what he doesn't seem to realize is that he, an intelligent designer, made up the whole software code. And so it's just like, it was a stupid point on his part is what I'm saying. But no, I did not like that portion of the book. I, I almost gave up on the book there because it was so boring. I'm glad I didn't give up though. I mean, his stuff, the, when he talks about bats, he talks about all these different animals. I mean, there's, there's some great, there's great stuff in this book, but there's also some stupid stuff in this book. Another thing I was not a huge fan of in the book was, uh, I mean, I kind of just touched on it, but this book is long-winded. Like when I said this book is long, like page length, it's not necessarily like super long, but it is a long book. It feels so long. And each chapter is like 50 pages long, which you know that's pretty long for a chapter. And he just, there were several times in the book where I was like, why are you telling me this? Nobody cares. So overall, my thoughts on The Blind Watchmaker is, uh, it's a really good book, makes a, some really good arguments for the theory of evolution. Uh, some not so great ev uh, arguments against the possibility of God existing, but some really good arguments for the theory of evolution. Um, and I think it's, it's, I don't know, it was definitely worth a read. I definitely exercise the mind. I feel smarter after reading it. I feel like Dawkins is an incredible writer. He's great at illustrating points to dumb people like me. Um, and uh, yeah, overall, I thought it was really, you know, it was a good book. And, uh, you know, as I said, it is outdated and I'm, and I'm pretty sure some of the science in this has been debunked or overturned. Um, and, you know, I've always had trouble with the idea that mutations are what cause these changes, but at the same time, I don't see how anything else could, but then again, mutations are always like mistakes in DNA and mistakes usually harm the animal and Dawkins acknowledge that, but it's, I don't know. I, I, for the most part, got a much more fuller understanding of evolution, but there are still some questions I have. I definitely think Darwin was pretty close to hitting the mark. I don't know if we have as a uh, as a society quite figured out exactly what's going on with evolution, but I do think there is a lot to it for sure. I would give the blind watchmaker a solid uh, solid B plus just because it was hard to it was hard to get through because it was so long winded, but it was really good in that I mean, I learned something. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, have you read The Blind Watchmaker? If so, please comment below and tell me what you thought of it. And as always, if you liked this video, please like it and subscribe. Tell your friends about the channel. There's certainly an argument that can be made that I am a de-evolved human because that last clip was stupid. And never forget to...